Hello everyone, um, this is one of the first topics that is covered in A-level physics, measurement and quantification. Um, just before I move on, there's a link in the description um, with notes for this topic. I suggest you download these um, because you can fill in blanks as we go along with this mini-series, just three videos covering all of the topic. Um, you can also download a worksheet together with full solutions for it, so you can check your answers um, once this topic is done. So, what are we going to discuss over these three videos? Um, physical quantities, okay, we'll see what they are, and we're going to discuss also um, physical quantities in terms of their base quantities and the, um, uh, the derived quantities. We'll also discuss units, again, units for the base quantities and units for um, uh, derived quantities. We'll be breaking down units for derived quantities as well into base units and we'll see how that works out. And we'll also be discuss discussing the concept of homogeneity of equations, which is one of, the, one of the two properties for having an equation um, uh, be correct. Okay, If an equation is correct, it needs to match both in terms of numbers, amounts from the left-hand side and right-hand side, but also in terms of its base units. Okay, So that is what will be covered in, this, in these couple of videos. So, first things first, if I had to ask what can be measured, um, you can come up with many, many, many options say, I don't know, the, the size of the disk that's in front of me, um, the length of distance I travelled this morning to get here, um, the brightness of the lights in this room, the, the sound level okay, in, in a room or in your headphones or over your speakers, uh, the temperature in a room, the time it takes to move from point A to B, anything that you can measure in physics we refer to as a, physical, a physical quantity. Okay, so um, uh, as far as definitions are concerned, it is given there to, to the left-hand side, to my left-hand side, anything that can be measured is called a physical quantity. Please write this down on your notes. Um, to this side, you're going to see which page we're on. Okay, so we are part of workbook one. Um, we're on page 17. So, moving on, how do we represent physical quantities. Physical quantities are all, always given in, um, are represented in two parts, okay? So you're given a number and a unit. And let's just assume that this is the, I don't know, the height of the disc that is in front of me, okay? 76 centimeters. This number gives me the amount of the quantity and this unit states the type of quantity seeing that it is centimeters i know that it is length okay if i just change the units without changing the amount say give it as seconds then i know that this physical quantity the type of physical quantity is now time okay so the unit will change our understanding of what type of physical quantity we're dealing with. When we compare two physical quantities, um, so if I just say I can have a disc at a height of 76 centimeters and I ha can have the same disc or table, whatever, um, at a height of 78 centimeters. And if I had to ask which is the larger value, then you will automatically go with this. When I generally ask students, say, how did you compare these? Um, most of my students would say, well, I just compare the values and go with the larger value. And that is not exactly what, what goes on um, uh, during the process of comparing. What you're really looking at first is the unit and not the number. Let me just demonstrate this. If I just give this as 78 kilograms and ask, which is the bigger value, which is, which is the biggest um, quantity there, uh, you can't just compare those two because their units do not match. This is a mass and this is a length. You can't compare a mass and the length and decide which one is bigger. 
Okay, so um, first thing that you do when you compare physical quantities, and we do this unknowingly, okay, um, is looking at units, seeing that they match, seeing that they are made, and they are you're comparing two physical quantities that are the same, okay, both of them are length or both of them are mass, and only then you can compare the values, I mean their amounts, okay. Anyway, so that's it about comparing physical quantities. Physical quantities come in two types, okay? I've introduced this before. They come as base quantities and they come as derived quantities. And starting off with base quantities, um, base quantities, I compare them to Lego blocks, okay? So if you go and buy, uh, this is not sponsored by the way, uh, if you go and buy a, 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 a container full of Lego blocks, most probably it will come with a defined set of pieces. All the pieces would be different, but it would you would have, say, 60 different types of pieces. Now, it's up to you how you'd combine those pieces to create whatever you'd want to create, okay? Your creativity would be um, your, your absolute limit there. With base quantities, this is very similar, okay? So, Lego blocks, someone actually designed the Lego blocks, those 60 pieces that they gave you, manufactured them and presented them to you. With base quantities, there are seven of these base quantities, okay? There are seven quantities that have been invented and agreed upon by human beings, and that is why we call those being um, fundamental, okay? Fundamental quantities. Um, and you can combine these whichever way you like to create even more quantities, okay? And in that case, those new quantities are called derived quantities because well, we got those by combining base quantities, okay? So, base quantities, they're not as, um, they're, they're, there are not as many as Lego blocks, obviously, if you've got 60 Lego blocks, this is just seven, but these seven um, you need to know of um, by heart, okay? So, seven fundamental quantities, and they've got two very particular properties, okay? First property. They cannot be defined by any other physical quantity. Um, I remind you, list these down on the workbook, okay? Fill the workbook, fill your notes as we go along, okay? So they cannot be defined by any other physical quantity. What do I mean by this? Um, the best thing to do, I mean, for me to explain this, is to, to come up with uh, an, another quantity, which is not base, but rather derived, let me say, uh, let, let's take velocity for example, okay? So if I am to define velocity, the definition for velocity would go something along the lines of uh, the, the rate uh, at which a certain distance is covered, okay? So essentially it's the an amount of distance that is covered over a period of time. I have just defined velocity by using length, or distance, okay, and time. So to define velocity, you need to know what length is and what time is. Okay, so this is a case where velocity is defined by other physical quantities, okay? Um, with base units, that doesn't happen, okay? So if I am to define, take one of the base quantities, um, time, what is time, okay? Time is time. All right, I, I, can't, I can't say time is um, length multiplied to, I don't know, current. It doesn't make sense, okay? So you can't define any of those seven base quantities. We're going to mention them very soon. Uh, using other physical quantities. Also, very much related to it, is that they are accepted as being functionally independent of one another, meaning mathematically, if I am going to build, again, let me take velocity for this. If I'm going to build an equation for velocity or speed, that's going to be the displacement over time. Okay, so length divided by time. Um, and this is very important. I mean, the, the, the mathemat mathematically, velocity is equal to these other two physical quantities. If I am going to construct an equation for time, it has to be... Um, equal to time. Yes, I can have other equations where time is uh, included in them, but if I if say I'm going to go with 
power is energy divided by time and therefore take um, time as being subject there and have it as energy divided by power and say, okay, I can give a, a, an equation for time by, I mean, through energy and power. Both energy and power are derived quantities. Okay, so you need to use base quantities to construct this. So at the end of the day, you are still trying to define time by itself. Okay, which is obviously not a good definition. Um, generally in physics, we try to take a universal constants to, to, to give such definitions. But at the end of the day, please remember that these seven base quantities are created by people. Um, uh, and it's good that we've got them because then by using these seven, we can construct other, other new quantities. Okay, so we can measure practically anything in, in physics. So, what are these seven base quantities? They're listed in the table, okay? Um, uh, you need to know all of these. So mass, length, time, electric current, temperature, amount of substance, and luminous intensity. Maybe what's new to you is amount of substance, okay? It, it's, not, it's not mass, it's not an amount of, of atoms as such. Um, it is measured in moles. We're going to see this very soon. And luminous intensity is the intensity of light being emitted from a source, okay, from a light source, for example, and that is measured in candelas. Um, so this, what you're seeing here is a table that you need to fill in your notes. Again, we're still on page 17. You've got that table there and please fill it in. If you haven't downloaded them yet, please click the link in the description. So symbols, most of them you've, you've done already at previous levels of physics. So with mass, it's a small m, length, uh, lowercase l, time, lowercase t, electric current i, temperature capital T, because the SI unit for temperature is the Kelvin. Okay, so, so we, we're, we're always using capital T when we're using Kelvin. Um, generally, we're using theta if we're going with degrees Celsius, but the Celsius scale is not... Uh, the, the Celsius, rather, the degree Celsius as a unit is not the SI unit, okay? So uh, we're listing these in their SI units. Uh, we're going to see that very soon. Amount of substance is given by capital N in equations, and the luminous intensity is given by an I. Uh, well, a common question that comes up at this point is, okay, we've got two capital I's there, one representing electric current and one representing luminous intensity, and you're right, we've run out of symbols. Okay, um, that's, that's a common problem in, in, in physics. Um, we use a Greek alphabet, Latin alphabet. Uh, well, okay. we're, we're reusing the same symbols. Generally, you, you'd, get the, um, uh, you'd get an understanding of whether, whether we're referring to electric current or luminous intensity from the equation, depending on all the other physical quantities that you've got within that equation. So, as far as the units are concerned, kilogram, meter, second, ampere, Kelvin, mole, and candela. That is most probably what's new there for you, the moles and the candelas. Candela being, I think, one of the um, sexier units. Um, it means a candle in, in, um, in Spanish. So, hey, brilliant to, 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 to um, give, give an idea of the brightness of light. Now, yeah, candles might vary in terms of brightness, but let, let it go. Um, so the symbols, okay, the unit symbols, so kilogram, meter, seconds, amps, capital A, Kelvin, okay, yes, I units, um, mole, well, not much of an abbreviation there, M-O-L, and candelas is CD. Haven't used that for quite some time. Join us in the next uh, sec section of this video for us to discuss derived quantities. In the meantime, there's a worksheet and you can start working out some questions and comparing your answers to solutions.